Hey guys, welcome back to Almost Inevitable Design. My name is Still PK, and I make WordPress tutorials for designers and developers. Okay, now we're gonna start finishing up, well, we're gonna start the last part of finishing up on all this stuff, which is the global settings for our new website, which is um, a WooCommerce site. Now, one thing that um, will open up a lot of discussion and everybody has their own ideas about is uh, how font sizes will resize depending on the screen size. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about that, but just something that I want to uh, uh, show off is not just the t-shirt, but the watch is the Casio calculator watch. <laughs> Marty McFly wore that, so yeah. <laughs> um, going to start the timer. Cool. All right. So, uh, for now I am going to stick with, uh, how breakdance takes care of its typography sizes. All right. Because it is the easiest to do without actually editing or changing any code. I have my own preferences, uh, as you can see how I uh, explain it here. This is a very long, uh, video and um, there's a long tutorial about this and a bunch of code this is all written out in SAS and everything but uh, yeah so <clears throat> I have my own very complicated way of graphing and plotting things to get the sizes at the exact uh, screen size font sizes at the exact screen sizes that I uh, prefer but Right now, here in Breakdance, one thing that really, really impressed me was the ability to actually have different base sizes and setting a ratio, which is very cool. I think that is very cool. I'll show you how this works, all right? So body font, let's just add Libre Franklin. Oops, Franklin, there we go. Now, base size. Uh, would be the, what is it, paragraph, uh, body font size. Let's add 20. I usually go with 20 in um, on desktop. And we're going to change that to 16. Okay, cool. You know what, maybe here should be 16. Yep. And on a mobile, we won't care about it on mobile. So, oh, did that just delete everything? All right, <laughs> all right, 20, somewhere around here. No, anything smaller would be 16. All right, because that size is, includes a lot of laptop sizes, smaller laptop sizes, because laptops are like 1300 at best. It's usually, a lot of them are smaller than that, uh, 1280, 1140 something like that for surfaces and stuff sometimes uh, smaller laptops 13 inch laptops 11 inch laptops for example so I'll just do it leave it at that okay now ratio this ratio thing is very very cool if you have one that h1 and that body ha are the same size now the difference that you see here it doesn't look the same is because um, each font has different x heights different cap heights, different baselines, everything depending on how the font is put together. Sometimes they look different. So that's a pro that's that's the main reason why that happens. But um, anyways, if we change the ratio, it goes up like that. Now, the way that this is calculated is it takes the base size, in this case, 20 pixels for the body font and then it multiplies by that ratio for x h6 and then it keeps multiplying again and again so it'll be this ratio to the sixth power which is the little thing and the six the caret and the six um to the sixth power the exponent and you get whatever all right so for example if we're doing 1.2 um and i've already done this on this on, on my in my browser so, so let me do that 1.2 two to the sixth power, oops, to the sixth power would be 2.98. So 
So that's times three-ish, right? Okay, so if we set 20 pixels, then times three-ish would be h1. And here, h1 is 90. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do something like, oh, that's gonna be a lot of rooting. No, we're gonna, just gonna change it a little bit. 1.25? What do we get with 1.25? 3.8, that's 80, a little less than 80, 90, yeah. All right, that, that's close enough, right? Um, in advance, we can actually set them separately. So we'll just change the H1 to 90. So, oh yeah, well, set the REM to 90, okay. Oh, this is gonna be messing up a lot of my calculations. I usually set the REM at 20, um, but this is 16 right now. So what am I, I'm going for 90, okay. All right, let's see what happens. Um, font size. 90 divided by 16 is 5.6 pixels. <laughs> I'll just do that for now. Whatever. Okay, that's fine. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Done. And let's set the containers. All right, so sections. Now, I always use because I use 20, it's easy to do 60 rem for the container width, which is where the content sits in here. This content right here, you see that? Yeah, the four columns, this guy here, that's 1200, all right? I like 1200 because it can be easily divided into two, three, four, five, and six. It's a great number to use. Um, 12 is always a good number, six is a good number, and then you multiply it by 10, you even get uh, a multiple of five. So it's it's a great number. That's why this is 120 as well, uh, as you can see here, right? Um, and that's why I set the rem to 20. Now, in order to do that, in order to set the rem to 20, you need to actually add some extra code, which is why I wasn't sure, but for the sake of easy calculations, I am just gonna have to do that. <laughs> That's, I'm just so used to dividing by 20. Some people actually use uh, 10 pixels as one rem, so depends, really. All right, so I've looked this up on the front end and I already have this code ready. Add this code and then one rem, one rem becomes this base size, okay? So, the way that everything works is based off of CSS variables. If you want to learn about CSS variables, come to almostinevitable.com. I have a tutorial on that. So it uses CSS variables. The ratio is another variable and you keep multiplying it again and again and again. Now, because it's in the root, it's right above HTML, which means in HTML, you can actually use that variable. So if you set the base size differently, the rem size, root m size, will change along with that. So you get some extra oomph to your settings, okay? So let's just add that, all right? That will be in the almost inevitable um, post that is about this course that you have here. So find it there and just follow the description in the link below. And just follow it there and you'll get that code, drop it in there and that should take care of it. There's not much else that we need to do here. We're just gonna set the sections now. Uh, container width will be done in rem, which is 60. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, vertical padding will be six. All right, and on slightly smaller screen sizes, we'll go with 4.5 rem. Okay, that's about it. I don't like having extra horizontal padding, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and we're gonna use column gaps anyways later, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I think that's good, right? Oh, that heading that we set up, we don't need to use rem anymore. 90 is a large size, we don't need that. We'll just use four. Oh, 4.5, yeah, cool. Oh, 
yeah, we'll, we'll set the, oh, you know what? All headings will be caps. Cool. That applies to all headings. So that's great. Um, letter spacing, word spacing. Um, I'm fine with letter spacing. Using letter spacing, uh, M units are good, just as a good rule of thumb. M is good because it is proportional to the font size as opposed to rem or pixels, which is um, more absolute. So, well, pixels are absolute. Rem technically supposed to be absolute, but we change it. Um, but M changes depending on whatever font size it is. So there, there's a whole tutorial that we can talk about later on that, but it's not for here. We'll talk about it sometime later. All right, so it's all done. All the global settings are done and we are now ready. This keeps going to the, yeah, I wanna I want go back to the settings page. Yeah, so we are now ready to start exporting these images and uh, build the header, footer, and the content. How many minutes do I have left? I have three minutes left. Yeah, that's my daughter. Yeah, I have, when she was like in prep, that's before first grade, zero off grade, not kindergarten. And here, here in Australia, Queensland, they have kindergarten and then prep and then first grade. So that's, she was cute when she was in prep. She's still cute. <laughs> She's fifth grade now. She's still cute. Uh, anyways, this will all uh, export. We'll, all, we'll export all of this. Okay. All right. So let's, let's set up some pages. Oh yeah. Let's ex import some logos because we have only a few minutes left. I'm just going to do some quick stuff that I can do in this time. Uh, if I can find the right, oh, here it is. So I have the two logos here, all right? Now they are exported from here. Now technically logos would be, a lot of people think logos exported in SVG is the only and the best way. It is the best way, but it is not the only way because you can use PNG files, of course, or JPEG, <laughs> of course, but, but the important thing is that the logo doesn't look really bad. Like it can get pixelated. Couple things, one, if you upload an image that is too big, it will get shrunken down. And if it shrinks down too much, the browser cannot make it blurry enough for it to be smooth. No anti-aliasing happening there, which means it will look pixelated and bad. So don't upload it any larger than three times the intended size, okay? Twice is all you need, but anything over that, I've seen people, and this is not, I'm not kidding, I've, I've had, not had, but I've seen juniors upload like a PNG that is 3000 pixels wide for a logo that goes in like a 180 pixels uh, rectangle. It's gonna look pixelated, it's gonna look bad. So don't do that, okay? All you need to do is just export this thing in a PNG for this case, in this case, a PNG, did I pull, no. PNG in double the size, and that's about it. If you want to go triple, fine, but there, you're not you're not gaining it, gaining anything from that. Uh, double the size is enough. Now, if you want to export this in SVG, that's fine, but you got to make sure that it's in curves. At the moment, this is just text. Okay, it's just text, so I it doesn't help if I export it in uh, uh, SVG because there's no difference from exporting it in text. Okay. Um, it has to be, it startles me. <laughs> it has to be uh, in curves. So you gotta, ex you gotta convert to curves. Um, XD does not have that. This is done in Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. So uh, you gotta do it there. For our intents and purposes, this really is not an important logo. So I'm just gonna export it in PNG, uh, double the size. And I have two of them dark and light. So they go in there and I'm done. Okay, all right, then I will see you in the next video. Again, same thing, if you need Breakdance, uh, use the affiliate link below, um, join the Discord, download everything off of all the links in the post related to this
course, which is also in the link in the description below. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.